Welcome back to my Billet Intake Manifold Build Series. I'm teaching you how to build an intake manifold like this from start to finish, from design all the way to machining. If you're new here, definitely stop this video, go back to the beginning of the series and start there. I don't want you to miss any of the information I'm sharing there. If you're not new here and you've been following along, let's get back into Fusion and get going. I have an absolute buttload of time into this project, so please support the channel, hit that subscribe button. All right guys, in the last couple episodes, we went through the design process of designing these lower runners and these upper runners. So today, we're gonna be designing these fuel rails here. These are done out in extrusion, and we're gonna be doing these lower plenum bases. So these bolt to here, and then the plenums bolt onto these. So I wanted to start beginning these episodes with answering your guys' questions. So I'd just like to go over those and answer some of those now. First one, what material am I using? So this is all made out of 6061 T6 aluminum. I buy these in pre-cut blocks, cut from plate. And I did that because they were an odd size that didn't make sense to buy it in extrusion. The plenums back here were made out of four by four square extruded bar. And the plenum bases were made out of like a one by four extruded bar. It's typically cheaper to buy the material in extruded bar, but sometimes it doesn't make sense when it's an odd size because you'd be having a lot more machine time and things like that. Better to just buy it in a cut blank that matches the size of your part. I had somebody that obviously knows these engines well ask about how I'm gonna bolt this manifold up because factory engine has studs in, in these two center holes and this obviously won't slip down over studs. It also has some dowel pins. But the cure is that we're gonna not use the studs, we're gonna remove the studs and use bolts and we're gonna omit using the dowel pins. It may not line up perfectly on every single engine, but I think it's gonna be very close because Honda's machining is pretty spot on. So that's how we're curing that issue. It didn't make sense to make these lowers two piece. The factory lowers are two piece like this. So you, you can bolt on each piece individually, but their angle of entry on the on the heads didn't really work well for the design that I had in mind. I really wanted the runners to be able to cross each other to have a more straight, direct flow path. So that's why we chose to do it that way. All right, next question. Somebody had asked why I modeled the stock in Fusion instead of just aligning the stock to the part in the stock generator when you do your setup in CAM. The main reason was that I needed to have the stock modeled appropriately so that I could attach the lower trunk trunnion table to the stock. So it made more sense to me to have it modeled so that I could draw the trunnion table exactly where I wanted it off of the stock to locate this part perfectly. And we'll go over that in a little more detail when we get into the cam side of things, but that's the basic general reason why I did that. Somebody asked why I'm using O-rings over gaskets. Well, to get custom gaskets made is uh, pretty involved. I wouldn't even really know how to do that. I've tried to laser cut my own gaskets out of some gasket material before and it doesn't seem to agree well with laser cutters. So the simple solution is just to use O-rings. The main reason the OEMs don't use O-rings is because it takes a lot more machining time to cut an O-ring groove than it does to just deck off a surface and put a gasket in there. And the OEMs are very, very concerned with the time to manufacture. When we're talking about a super trick billet part like this, a little bit of extra time for cutting O-rings grooves isn't a big deal. And O-rings are very reliable and they seal perfectly every time. I use them on all my intake manifolds and I trust them. So that's why I've chosen to use O-rings over gaskets. All of the dimensional information for O-ring grooves and things like that are out online. You can search for that. It's really easy to get an O-ring groove to fit perfectly as long as you're hitting those tolerances. Somebody asked me if there's any good resources for learning G-code. This is a pretty loaded question. G-code in itself is many times machine specific besides the basic G-codes, your GO, G1, G2, G3. And for the most part, all the CAM systems handle that now. Back in the day when we were programming machines, we would have to basically hand type in our, our programs. I began that way in the industry. I would hand program all my lathe programs. Uh, we would do a little bit of two dimensional CAM in software for the mills. But beyond that, everything was hand programmed. So there was a lot of math involved, a lot of knowing G-code. But in my opinion, that's not really necessary anymore. So I wouldn't really enamor yourself too much with knowing all of G-code as like a second language. I would just learn the basics. And anything you have questions about, you can Google. It's really easy to look up. I still do it all the time. If I'm not sure what a certain G or M code is for a specific machine, I just Google it. Just look it up. So don't be overly concerned with learning G code. How much time do I have into this design and programming and manufacturing? That's a pretty loaded question too, because I didn't keep track super well. This design was going back and forth with the customer over several months. And part of the programming of this part was me learning Fusion as well. So I think this one took a little longer than it should have. But in general, I would say you're looking at at least a couple hundred hours of design and programming time for, for this whole intake manifold. Somebody asked why I was using lofts versus shells. 
A loft function is basically you cut between two profiles. We covered that in the first couple videos. A shell is basically you have a you have a profile already, like a solid model, and you just shell out the inside of that. The problem is when you have flanges and things involved here and here, that shell function would also try to hollow out those flanges, which isn't really necessarily what you want. So unless you were to just draw the runners by themselves and shell them out, the shell function isn't really gonna work in this case. I do believe I used shell on the plenums, so when we get to that, I'll show you how that functioned. Somebody asked about my choice in prototyping versus production methods. Wondering why I'm using subtractive machining versus additive manufacturing like laser centering. I'm gonna be honest, I did use additive manufacturing to prototype this. I did the design based off of the, the scan data. I worked up the design to clear everything the way I thought it should. And then I did actually 3D print this out of plastic on my 3D printers here in the shop. I sent that to, to the customer. I actually had to print them a couple and we went back and forth a couple times to get it just right. So I did actually prototype this with additive manufacturing, but that doesn't really make sense when it comes to production. This would be a huge part for laser centering. Uh, most machines that I'm aware of aren't big enough to produce this part, and they're also still very expensive. I do think the price is coming down, but currently they're good for prototyping or one-off parts, but they just don't make sense for production yet, but we are getting there. We're gonna talk about that in some future videos too. So that's about it for the question and answer section of this. Let's get into designing these plenum bases and fuel rails. All right, guys, let's get into fusion here. So this is where we're at. We've got the lower runners and the upper runners designed. So let's do the fuel rails first here just to get those over with real quick. So I'm gonna activate those and I'm gonna roll my timeline back. So this is the basic profile of that fuel rail extrusion I'm using. This is a Dash 6 fuel rail extrusion I'm using from Ross Machine Racing. Uh, they have several fuel rail extrusions that are available in blanks that you can machine to your, your own uh, profiles. I believe they have Dash 6, Dash 8, and Dash 10. Uh, the extrusion has a hole in it that's the tap size for a dash six which is a 9 16 18 i believe so this is that basic profile and they have the dimensions on their website so you can extrude your own when you're doing the design work so i just drew that on a plane and then extruded that the distance i wanted so i have a looks like a two direction extrusion yeah so i have two sides uh different lengths to get the length that i wanted so i just extruded off that plane one distance and then the other, other distance so it gave me it gave me the length i wanted even though my plane wasn't on center all right and then i drew the injector holes here so i just drew on that surface 14 millimeter hole for the injector o-rings and then i extrude cutted those so extrude cut there so then i drew these hole profiles for the bolts for them just so that they would intersect the lower runners and if you remember in the first video there was some issues with these lower runners where i had designed things in the future and then referred to that future part to create features on the original part so this is this is where that happened here so i drew these hole profiles and then if you notice on my model here, there's no mounts for it yet because when I open up this fuel rail, that timeline of the lower runners is actually affected uh, because I did it in this order. So it gets a little bit confusing at times. It probably would have been smarter to just create that feature on the lower runners first and then go, go and create the fuel rail after the fact, but I didn't do it that way. So this is how I did it. So then I extruded those bolt holes there, and then I drew some counter bore circles around those bolt holes and extruded that counter bore. So now I have bolt holes to mount the fuel rail that are careful not to intersect the injector holes, but still intersect the runner so I could make a mounting provision on there for it. So then I just wanted to make things cool. So I drew this profile here so that I could cut away some excess material on these fuel rails. And then I went ahead and started filleting all of these features on this uh, this fuel rail to make it look nice, basically. I did actually go in after my initial design and prototyping, because when I sent this prototype to the customer, he needed a little bit of an extra injector clearance right here for the injector clip. So I had actually gone in and made extra clearance right there on the fuel rail after the fact. But that's basically it. That's the fuel rails done. I didn't put any threads here in the end or anything because I was just gonna tap those and all I really needed was the hole. So it's pretty basic design. It did take quite a bit to get the clearances right here. So I actually ended up taking, I believe 20,000 off the bottom of that extrusion and that gave me just enough here let me turn this on just enough room to so you can see I have just barely a little air gap there so then I just copied this part and created those same features on the other side and that's the fuel rails done all right so let's turn that off and then let's get into this plenum base 
So I'll roll that back. And my first sketch here, I was just starting to create kind of a basic profile so that I had something to go off of to create the plenum shape I wanted. And then I extruded that. Now I'm just drawing this on the face of this, this upper runner part. So this sketch here was just drawn on, on the face of these upper runners started my sketch on that surface and then uh, extruded that. I also was trying to make both sides of these plenums and plenum bases symmetrical so that this lower plenum base could just be flipped for the other side and then the plenum could be bolted on the opposite direction to that plenum base so that I didn't have to make multiple parts. I could make one plenum, just two of them for each intake manifold and one plenum base, just two of them for each each intake manifold. So kind of some some of that forward thinking where you're trying to save yourself some work in the future. No, no need to make two different plenum bases and two different plenums when you could possibly just mirror the part or use the same exact part on both sides. So then I just filleted the corners here and then I filleted these little corners here. Now I'm adding the bolt holes, just matching the bolt holes I already had in that upper runners. I just created a boss basically here because I needed something those for those bolts to thread into. So I created this boss that would protrude to the inside of the plenum, but would give us a nice little feature to have threads inside. And then I just filleted those. So pretty straightforward. So this is what we're looking like currently. Okay. So now I'm getting ready to add thickness to this profile, but I needed it to be uh, have clearance around this profile that's already there. So I wanted this to basically sit down into a pocket in the plenum base. I basically used this projected curve here and then I offset that projection. So I just gave it a little bit of clearance, I think like five thou around that peripheral of that whole uh, flange on those upper runners. And then I added an extruded feature to that. So now, my upper runners sit down into a little pocket in that plenum base so it locates it pretty much perfectly and then i on this feature here i just created the threaded holes inside of that that feature that we created earlier just using the sketch features that were already there and in this sketch i'm sketching on the back surface of this part now i was sketching all these profiles that i wanted to create uh, one of the things that this this part needed was a cross tube to basically balance the pressure in each plenum basically for idle and and cruise conditions so you're getting equal pressure in both plenums most dual plenum engines have a, a little balance bar of some kind that allows pressure to go between the two but i needed to make these symmetrical so so i drew all this out it took me quite a while to try to make it able to be flipped and used on both sides. You'll see how it comes together here in the future. So then I extruded out these pockets using this sketch. I just created these pockets here just to, just to take some material out of there, make it trick looking and a little bit lighter with less thermal mass. And then I created this bolt pattern that's symmetrical around the outside of the plenum here. And I cut those. So now we have this bolt pattern here that goes around the peripheral and that's symmetrical. So the plenum, the way it bolts on, it can be flipped and point either direction respective to that plenum base. Then I just added a fillet, some fillets around these profiles here, around the outside profile and around those pockets, uh, just to clean up the design, make it look nice. And then on this side, I added this O-ring groove. So I had to sketch out this whole O-ring groove and then extrude cut that. Again, O-ring groove dimensions are pretty easily found online if you do a little bit of Google searching. These are all done to a static face pressure type O-ring groove. So this is where that plenum will seal up against that plenum base using this O-ring groove here. And then I wanted to create a similar O-ring landing point for uh, where this plenum base will bolt, bolt up to the lower runners. So I created this these arcs here. Let me hide this lower runner. So I created uh, these arcs here that can be used to extrude this little O-ring groove here. So this O-ring will just sit around those little trumpets on the upper runners. Then the O-ring will be crushed into that groove here. So that's what will seal the plenum base to the upper runners. So just a round O-ring there. And then I began to create the features for my crossover tube. So I created a little protrusion here and then drew this arc here for creating a through hole that was that matched the inside diameter of the tubing I was gonna use and extruded that. And I added some fillets there to make that nice. I chose not to add a fillet on this lower side here because I didn't want the fillet to intersect, uh, interfere with this groove. So it doesn't look quite as clean as these but I just didn't have the space to have a fillet here and not hold the plenum up basically away from that O-ring. 
So I didn't want to create a leak there based on my geometry. So I, I chose not to fill with that. And then I created this arc on this side that was just slightly larger than the tubing size that I was gonna use and extruded that. And I extruded it down to a depth where it would have a stop basically. So as you assemble this thing, you can stick the tube in this hole and then put the other side of plenum base on and it'll capture the tube in the design without needing any hardware or anything like that. And then I created a plane here that was offset from this face here so that I could create my O-ring groove in here. So then I created this arc here, which is the O-ring diameter I was gonna use and extruded that the distance I wanted. So now I have an internal O-ring groove here that we can stick an O-ring in that'll seal that tube. And then that crossover tube will be able to be inserted as you assemble the manifold and it'll be completely sealed and not use any hardware to connect those two. So that's about it on this guy. Let me show you how far we are here. So there's where we're at. We have low runners, upper runners, fuel rails, and plenum bases. So you can see where this crossover tube will go. I didn't bother to model it because it's just a piece of three quarter inch tubing. I probably will throw it in the design at some point just to finish it up. So these plenum bases are actually two slightly different parts because it omits the hole in this hole in one end, which has the provision for it over here. So basically what I did is I copied this plenum base uh, before I created that hole feature here. And I copied it as new instead of leaving it as derived from the original part. And that way I could add this, this other feature to just the, uh, just the new part, the copied part, uh, without having automatically add it to the original part, which would have added it to this opposite end over, over here. So that's how I accomplished that. So that's about it for this video, guys. In the next video, we're gonna do the plenums, the design work on the plenums, and then we'll get into doing cam. So once again, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you do all the subscribey, likey stuff, comment. Ask questions because I will be covering questions at the beginning of each episode if I have enough to cover. So ask questions down in the comments. I really appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next one.